The Brothers Karamazov by Fyodor Dostoevsky, a book that is praised by many and even said to be one of the greatest books ever to be written. It's a story about a family consisting of a father and three brothers. The three brothers are Dmitri, Ivan, and Alexei, and though they are related by blood, they have three differing worldviews and meanings for life. Mixed into the story is a murder mystery about their father, but in the end, the most important question may not be who killed him. Over 800 pages of dense philosophical writing, this is a book that was meant to be published in two parts, but Dostoevsky would meet his demise after publishing part one. So the question is, is it worth it to read? Let's find out together. Hello! Okay little bit of a jump scare. I am fighting a migraine today. I am going to be doing a vlog this next week of finishing the Brothers Karamazov. And I've already taken a look. I'm currently on page 182 and so I need to read about 95-ish pages per day to read this in time for the live show. So that's gonna be a little tough. Yesterday I took the time to mark out the spots I need to stop at, so hopefully we can get to page 280. Oh, so I'm like reading 100 pages today. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. As for the first 200 pages, I have enjoyed this book. I don't think it's very boring. A lot of people said it's a boring classic and I haven't found it boring yet. There's some parts that are a little bit meh, but this family dynamic is very interesting. I'm not a fan of the father at all. So far, so good. I have no qualms and I don't really love it. It's just very neutral about it so far. Let's get to reading. I just got to book five. This book is so heavy. Literally my wrists are hurting. Book five. I'm on page 226. My migraine is a little bit better, but not by much. <laughs> but the last section, so book four, there are some really slam dunk conversations. Ivan's monologue to Katerina, absolutely insane. My opinion of Ivan definitely changed after that whole section. We've got like 50 pages um, for tonight, so we will do that when I'm back. And because I got to book five, I'm going to listen to... Um, the Hardcore Literature Club, uh, Ben's podcast episode for books three and four, because he combined them together. So I'm going to listen to that while I'm driving it around and all that stuff. It's about an hour. And, um, and then when we're back, we will continue. So yeah, um, it's gotten a lot more interesting, I think, in the past like 50 pages that I read. At least it, for me, it's been a while since I've picked up this book, so it could just be the fact that I haven't read it in, I think, like a month it's been since I picked it up last. But I am definitely enjoying it and curious to see where this book goes for sure. I will talk to you guys probably when I finish today's section or tomorrow morning. We'll see. update so I just wanted to talk a little bit about Ivan one of the Karamazov brothers because honestly with all of them I don't have any 
super specific opinions about them. I don't really love any of them other than Alyosha, like Dimitri and Ivan are kind of like meh, right? And the father, the father I don't think anybody likes. <laughs> But I, I got to around page 250 and Ivan and Alyosha are talking and it just suddenly this book has become so philosophical. But oh my god, look at all these feathers. Just like, like some parts of this book get so kind of boring, I guess you could say. Where you're just like, I don't know where this is going, what the reason of this plot is. What's the meaning behind this section of the story? Because when a book is 800 pages, you go through so many different encounters between so many different characters. It's kind of hard to keep track of. But here, with this conversation between Ivan and Alyosha is superb. Like, <laughs> I'm just going to quickly show you some annotations just absolutely beautifully said and the conversation is all about god and the existence of god the existence of the devil and basically humanity as a whole i'm really enjoying this section but there's one part that i just wrote like wow <laughs> and it's ivan saying I think that if the devil does not exist and man has therefore created him, he has created him in his own image and likeness. That's an interesting perspective and very believable because humans can be very, very evil. So yeah, page 250 right now really really good i've been reading this so much slower than anticipated slow and steady wins the race i guess but um really trying to absorb the conversation that's going on and i changed my music i will show you guys in a second but i changed my music to a lord of the Rings soundtrack and it is a vibe i haven't even read or watched the lord of the Rings, so we're going to continue on, but yeah, really just wanted to quickly talk about that before I forget about this section. It's going to be hard to talk about specific parts about this book once, you know, we get further into it so I don't spoil anything. This is what I was talking about. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, it's three hours long. I don't want to play it because I don't want to get copyright strike, but it is a vibe and this whole picture is also a vibe. It is now Tuesday and it's my lunch time and so I'm reading we are almost halfway through <laughs> we are almost halfway through so i'm on page 413 right now i think the last time we talked we were in ivan's section um so since then we've gone through a lot about Sosima's life and backstory we've seen a lot of changes happening in alyosha's life and perspectives and kind of his mission of what he wants to do. Now we're in book eight, which is called Mithya, which is Dimitri's, I guess, perspective now that we're in. We seem to be bouncing between all the brothers. So now we're in Dimitri's perspective and kind of him chasing after a woman. As we know, that is kind of like an underlying theme since the beginning of him and his father chasing after the same woman. So it's been interesting. There's a lot though in this section of like telling not showing, like the narrator randomly pops in and says very, I guess, cryptic things. In this way, again, the fact emerged that only three or four hours before a certain incident of which I shall speak below, then it goes into some details, 
and then it goes dot 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 but i anticipate like okay can we just get to what you're saying uh it's kind of annoying <laughs> and this is i think like the third or fourth time it's happened in a couple chapters so i'm just like can we get to the point um but yeah halfway there so that is very exciting i am enjoying it a lot more than i was in the beginning it is very very religious heavy and talking a lot about the bible so i can see why if people either don't really care about religion aren't interested in religion or don't know much about the bible it would get pretty boring to them but it's pretty fascinating to me so i'm happy to be a part of that crowd because then i would definitely not want to read an 800 page book that references the bible and religion as heavily as this does halfway there annotations galore this is kind of crazy to me I talked to you guys today but it is Wednesday and I am sitting here and reading and doing a castor oil pack with the heating pad so we're here chilling for about two hours doing this and so I wanted to give a quick update I am on part four book 10 boys is the title of book 10 and currently on chapter 5 of book 10. Lots of different parts. Um, page 570. So I finished my pages for today. But I wanted to continue on. Just so I can hopefully finish by Friday. Instead of on Saturday. So yeah, hopefully we can read to page 600 tonight. But it's been a lot of Dimitri. And I've noticed throughout this book, I've really gone back and forth on my feelings for each of these characters. I think I have gone through almost all the characters except for Alyosha, hatred, and then also feeling bad for them or understanding them more. So it's interesting. It's interesting to go through this. I am enjoying that a lot of things that were talked about in the beginning of the book are coming back up and kind of coming full circle and reminding me the things that were talked about in like the first third of the book because man I'm already almost 600 pages deep I'm not remembering every single scene or every single person so it's really helping tie all the loose ends together so I am enjoying that and I've noticed a lot more of that in the past like 50 to 100 pages. I'm finding it a lot easier to read at this point than I did in the beginning. Time's flying by while I'm reading it, so that is good. That is what you want with a classic. Well, that is what you want with any book, but specifically a classic, which is typically a bit more harder for me to read and concentrate on. Um, I do enjoy that. So yeah, my cats are about to fight. <laughs> so I'm going to continue on here relax and hopefully get to page 600 and then later tonight i want to start orlando by virginia wolf so i can finish it by the end of the month it's only like 260 pages so it shouldn't be too bad but i'm going to start that one tonight lots of classics this week <laughs> so it's been a day um uh, just wanted to give a quick reading update before i get some shut eye it is nine ish right now 
and I'm just gonna chill in bed. I want to read a book, but I don't want to read the Brothers Karamazov before sleeping because it's just so heavy. And I'm not in the mood to read Orlando. I started it the other day. It's really good. Just not in the mood to read it right now. And I'm also reading, <laughs> I read a lot of books at the same time, by the way. I'm also reading City of Bones, so I might start that, but I'm also kind of wanting to do a romance. So I might. Anyways, that's not the point of this clip. Oh, Spice is here with me. Wanted to give a, an update for the Brothers Karamazov. I am on page 658, chapter 8 of part 4 book 12 something like that I'm here so I'm hoping tomorrow it's a stretch but I'm hoping to finish tomorrow we'll see I don't have many updates from yesterday the story's still going on it is kind of a mystery like I don't want to get into spoilers right now but I am still liking it it's gotten a little bit of a lull right now and I'm not sure why I'm feeling like that um we were in Dimitri's perspective then we went into Alyosha's perspective um and now we're in Ivan's perspective but they are a lot more closer together for a while they were spaced out by big sections but now it's kind of every few chapters they're switching in between so yeah right now we're in Ivan's perspective that's that and yeah I'm gonna go get ready for bed I have a tea steeping and tomorrow we are hoping to finish this tomorrow is Friday I don't have any plans after work so we will aim to read this and finish it tomorrow wow crazy 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 and these so many tabs i don't think i've tabbed a book as much as i did this one really really good talk to oh sorry spice i scared her <laughs> i'll talk to you guys tomorrow <laughs>
a lot to discuss about this book. So I don't think I can get into everything, but the things that really gripped me and the things that keep me thinking, I want to talk about. And then the rest, maybe we can talk about in the comments below if you have read The Brothers Karamazov. First off, this book is a lot about the relationship between the three brothers. Um, it really goes into depth about familial relationships, brotherhood or siblinghood. And I could really relate to it because I have five siblings myself. I have three brothers and two sisters and I have different relationships with all of them. And throughout my entire life, my relationships between all of them have changed. Sometimes for the worse, sometimes for the better, varying different fluctuations. And you could see that reflected in this book it's quite honest, it's quite uh, relatable, and when you really think about it, you can see yourself in all of these characters, the good and the bad. It is quite alarming and shocking to kind of see bad qualities reflected to you where you do not like the character, but you can also recognize parts of your life where you were that character. And then that also speaks the same to the parts where these people, you love them, you care for them, you understand them better, and then you understand yourself better. It is definitely a very reflective book, and if you allow yourself to think about it and sit with it, I think you can find more appreciation for the book. Now the love triangles were crazy in this book. They were funny, but I didn't spend a lot of time reflecting on them or caring for them. It definitely brought a lot of um, laughter and funniness to the story, but also, man, these women were crazy. So many points I was like, you all are so delusional within these relationships. And it's so funny how love can really make or break someone's life and your relationships with people so it was a great part of the book but it's definitely not a part of the book that i find myself reflecting on i think it was just a great breakup between all the philosophical hard-hitting messages this book has a lot about religion spirituality morality in it some of my favorite parts were Zosima's lessons to Alyosha, as well as Alyosha's reflectiveness on his own life. And even Ivan's, I know a lot of people talk about Ivan's like soliloquy about kind of atheism or if God is real. And, you know, there was just parts in every single one of these soliloquies and messages that I could relate to that, you know, made you think and made you kind of try to understand your relationship with morality better. It was definitely interesting and something that made me ponder for a long time. Uh, one part of the book that I'm not sure if a lot of people enjoyed, I still need to go and look at some people's reviews about this book, but the trial was very fascinating to me. I think I said this before, but I am a true crime junkie. I love trials. I love just learning more about the justice system and just, humanity as a whole when it comes to things like murder like it's just insane to me and so when you know i have watched many 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 different trials over the past couple of years and basically reading a trial that is supposed to be written and read pretty satire was um fun for me now in some points are very satire and, and didn't read as that but other parts not so much I did find that some parts of the trial did drag on and the dramatics were quite dramatic in some points where I was like, this is not very believable, but I think that was also written to be read that way. But I did enjoy that. I enjoyed the whole investigation part of it, the trial. And honestly, I was shocked about the ending of the trial, even though it makes sense and it is the ending that I thought would be the ending. I still didn't like it <laughs> and I also wanted to note that I go into many books especially classics not knowing or trying not to know anything about them I don't want to read any spoilers and a lot of the times the author's notes the translator notes or the editor notes before the book starts include spoilers so I have learned to not read them so when I went to this book I skipped the introduction, 
I skipped the note about this edition and I skipped the author note that Dostoevsky wrote, which is like about three pages or two pages before the book starts. And that was definitely a mistake. So the author's note I read afterwards and it does give you some more insight to the book and your expectations of the book. And so if you have not read this yet, I would suggest reading the note from the author before reading the book. Um, I did also not know that this was supposed to be a two-parter. So Dostoevsky was, wrote this book as a first part to Alyosha or Alexei's life. And then book two would go into the present time of his life. So this book was supposed to be 13 years prior to book two. But Dostoevsky never was able to write book two because he died. We know some things about what his direction was supposed to be for book two, um, but it was never written. So the ending is not a very concrete ending. When I finished the book, I was quite disappointed with the ending, but then I went to the author's note and then I listened to some podcasts. I am a part of the Hardcore Literature Book Club on um, Ben McAvoy's Patreon. So I listened to the last podcast episode for this book and he went heavily into the fact that this was supposed to be part one of a two book part series. And knowing that definitely changed how I felt about the ending of this book overall, I am pleasantly surprised about this book. I did not know what to expect going into it and uh, I definitely enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I would. And um, this entire morning and even last night, I was just going through and reading all the parts that I highlighted and noted. And I think with a reread, I would even find more nuggets of wisdom in this book and it's definitely something I want to reread in the future, but I'm gonna give it at least like five years before rereading. But yeah, um, definitely a book that I enjoyed and will definitely be a part of my life for many, many years to come. So the question is, was it worth it in the end? The countless hours spent reading this 823 page monster of a book, the numerous Google searches of words, history, and meanings, the hours spent listening to podcast episodes deep diving into this book. Yeah, I think so. I think it was worth it. This is definitely a story that will stay with me for the rest of my life. And who knows, maybe it will end up being in the top 10 best books I've ever read, but only time will tell. So let me know what you guys thought about the Brothers Karamazov if you have read it. And I will see you guys next week. Happy reading!